And welcome back. Our next talk is The Rise of the Immersive Web by Eric Murphy Chuterine from the Eighth Wall. Uh, and as before, if you have any questions, please put them into the chat channel and we'll get to them at the end. Thank you. Thank you for the great introduction. It is a real pleasure to be here with you today in this virtual format. And I'm looking forward to speaking with you about this new global phenomenon and reality content that has skyrocketed in the past year. I call it the rise of the immersive web. Ready? Here we go. The web has always been a weird place full of GIFs, memes, and cats. What do you get when you add reality tech? Web AR llamas. All right, the three points that I wanna to speak to today. The first is that the immersive web is here. It is widespread and we are engaging with it regularly. The second is that the immersive web is generating value today. Hundreds of brands and companies have begun to build their web AR marketing strategies and they're seeing a real ROI on their activations. My third point is that the future is going to be bigger and I'll speak to some of the next milestones that we can expect to see. The web has constantly evolved along with our technology. It started with text-heavy websites and low-res photos, but then it became the place to consume rich media. Early technologies like Flash helped drive adoption and pave the way for platforms like YouTube and Vimeo, and then streaming services like Netflix and Disney+. The web is now evolving again with the availability of immersive content, and it can be seen today in two fundamental forms, web VR and web AR. Let me talk first about the state of WebVR. WebVR is headset driven. It consists of VR experiences viewed directly in a VR headset through a web browser, no separate app or purchase. Today's VR headset browsers are equipped to support WebVR. The Oculus browser and Firefox Mixed Reality browser are rapidly innovating and highlighting immersive VR content that you experience today on your own devices. Each VR headset is quite different and new web standards are being adopted to unify access to each of these headsets through a common web API. In contrast, web AR is smartphone driven. Today's mobile browsers are already equipped to support AR as the web has had mature APIs for the camera and motion sensors needed for augmented reality. I can't stress how big this is. According to AR Insider's March estimates, 2.97 billion mobile phones are already capable of running web AR. That makes web AR a larger addressable market than any other immersive format. Web AR is growing rapidly with mature frameworks and platforms in market, and these platforms are growing at a rapid pace. We've seen incredible innovation so far with back camera augmented reality, also known as world facing AR, and we are now poised to see the same with front facing AR. In fact, to add to the market, I'd like to take a moment to officially announce here on the AWE 2020 main stage, Eighth Wall's newest web AR offering, offering, Eighth Wall Face Effects. Eighth Wall is now providing the ability to create AR face effects of all kinds on the existing addressable market for web AR, and like always, no app needed. Expect to see a whole new class of web AR focused on the viewer, and unlike face effects you've used in the past, Eighth Wall Face Effects offer the freedom of the web, freedom on size limits, freedom to interact with existing web APIs, and the freedom to choose content guidelines that match your website's audience. Okay, let me now switch to talk about how the immersive web is generating value today. As I mentioned before, there are no app downloads and that means frictionless access to content. The immersive web allows instant updates. Content can change immediately, on demand, and without review, and you can incorporate information from real-time sources. And since the web is open, developers have broad leeway for innovation. They can integrate other APIs to build more powerful and responsive experiences. Let me show you an example of what this looks like in practice. Dive back into the jungle and discover the new world of Jumanji. There's no app to download, just click start to launch. 
This was a web air experience created for the theatrical release of Jumanji, The Next Level. It was created by Mixed Reality Agency Trigger in partnership with the Amazon Sumerian and powered by 8th Wall. It merges streaming video, 3D animation, and uses real-time speech recognition APIs to let you explore the world of Jumanji by speaking directly into your phone. This excellent activation is up for an Augie Award as a finalist in the category Best Campaign. This next activation for the Adidas Boost campaign, created by Agency Jam 3, highlights the frictionless nature of Web AR. By just pointing your phone camera at this poster, you immediately engage with the Adidas brand and you have a chance to win prizes by scratching an AR sticker off your Presto card. The web is experiential and it's delivering ROI. Part of this is in the form of dwell time. In the past year, we've seen some excellent campaigns that have really focused on dwell time. Some examples being General Mills Philo's campaign by iCandy, which, is, which focused on dwell time with product in hand, allowing you to turn an everyday cereal box into a playable game. We saw Adidas's Forever the Future finish line activation increasing in-store dwell time with futuristic web AR signage created by Happy Lucky and 14.4. We saw Lego Masters increase dwell time with an AR game that could be done anywhere, teaming up with Agency Trigger to create a weekly challenge to build virtual Lego structures with a chance to win a prize. In fact, AR Insider in 2019 reported that over half of viewers were spending over two minutes engaging with each web AR experience. In terms of engagement, we've seen a lot of progress here as well. Monopoly and Ally Bank increased out-of-home engagement with their interactive scavenger hunt in Web AR, challenging users to find interactive board game pieces around their city to win a prize, an experience created by Anomaly, Mediacom, and agency Missing Pieces. We also saw Spurbank Russia boosting their presence on International Women's Day with a Web AR campaign that was an AR gift that you could give to your loved ones. Um, a project created by Mosaic and Hyperreality. In terms of conversion, WebAR provides companies with a new path to directly convert. Lego's Hidden Side activation, created by Trigger, showed a ghost collection minigame which encouraged in-store conversion for that Lego line. The Adidas Jam 3 campaign I showed earlier directed users already in transit to head to their nearest Adidas store. The Jumanji Trigger campaign that we saw earlier had a purchase tickets button as an in-page call to action, directly allowing users to purchase tickets to the movie after interacting with the WebAR experience. Pink Floyd released a WebAR experience along with their box set, The Later Years, encouraging sales of this new album. Here's a video of what that looked like. Created by Agency Draw and Code and powered by 8th Wall, this incredible artistic experience brought the music and album artwork from Pink Floyd to life. Tens of thousands of fans across nearly 140 countries experienced this activation in the first week alone, with engagement times an average of two minutes. It is also up for an Augie Award this year as a finalist in the Best Campaign category. The Pink Floyd experience continues beyond the web AR experience and show to show how the campaign was extended as a lens on Facebook and Instagram. This is an important point because it shows that a web AR experience can work with other AR platforms as a fully integrated campaign. We are seeing the rise of the immersive web, but we've only gotten a peek at where it is headed. In the near term, expect to see the spatialization of the 2D web. This will take the form of web AR and web VR experiences that initiate from standard 2D web pages. In the same way that you would view an inline video on any news site, you will soon expect to be able to interact with immersive web content directly on the page. In the medium term, you can expect to see a gradual shift to headsets and glasses. The consumer VR market is getting its legs and consumer augmented reality is just a few years away. Headsets will ultimately gain traction with consumers as they realize the immersive web that they're already familiar with from their smartphones works much better in an immersive device. Finally, we will see the transition to reality-first browsers. 
people will expect to navigate between spaces rather than navigating across 2D web pages. Reality first browsers will keep you in one continuous immersive session, and they have the potential to disrupt everything we think about the web. New standards and long term investments will be part of the process, but our eventual path towards physical computing seems inevitable, and re envisioning the web will be part of this evolution. To recap, the immersive web is here. It's generating value today, and its future will be even bigger. Brands who haven't already should be planning an immersive web strategy, and companies should be thinking about how they fit into the evolution of this new internet. Thank you for listening to my session. Please be sure to visit 8th Wall's virtual booth to try out our new web AR face effects, and please follow us or share this talk on social media with hashtag AWE 2020. Thanks again. I'm happy to answer any questions in the live Q&A to follow. Thank you very much for that, Eric. That was a great plan. And congratulations on the announcement for face effects. Thanks, David. It's, a, it's been an exciting day and definitely very happy to be here in AWU Mainstream. Excellent. Uh, and so we do have some time for some Q&A. Uh, if anyone does have any questions, uh, please go ahead, put them into the chat channel, and we'll get them in. Um, just to hit a couple of questions off for you. Uh, what markets, given the current uh, COVID-19 situation, which markets do you see as really being able to take advantage of, uh, um, you know, the, the ace wall uh, and the uh, augmented devices? Uh, well, so certainly with COVID, you know, people have changed marketing strategies and campaigns and focused on kind of the current state of the world. Um, so in terms of our company, we've seen a shift from, you know, get outside and do things with friends type activations to, um, types of, you know, marketing or engagement or community building experiences that make sense in a shelter in place or kind of stay at home orders. Um, with the face effects that we just launched, of course, it becomes the you know, front facing augmented reality, uh, which is really great for not only, you know, kind of capturing your own space, but then sharing with friends and being able to build, um, you know, shared fun experiences between them. And so what was what we've kind of seen as a result of this transition is really a shift of how people are going about their marketing strategies. And I think you know, as the year continues, we're going to see changes here again as well. Great. Uh, and then a couple of questions uh, from the audience. Um, do face effects support uh, particle animations? Um, yeah. So yes, our, with our face effects, we're supporting all of the five web-based rendering engines that we supported previously for all of our other products, which includes 3JS, A-Frame, Amazon Sumerian, Babylon.js, and Play Canvas. Um, these, these rendering engines support a variety of different types of uh, particle effects, including pre-baked animations. And all of them can work in face effects. Great. Thank you. Um, and then uh, Tom was apparently uh, speaking about not-for-profits uh, not leveraging Eighth Wall. Can you speak a little bit about how you can work with uh, not-for-profits? Yeah, so I mean, we have, I mean, Aethel has a concept of kind of commercial and non commercial license activations. Um, when nonprofits, we, so in, in, in certain in situations that make sense, nonprofits are allowed to use non commercial license terms to be able to create AR activations. Um, we've seen a number of these in the past. Uh, most recently, there's some COVID related uh, activations that are trying to show how to social distance or raise awareness about uh, the disease. Um, and yeah, if anyone is involved in, is interested in building non-commercial or non-profit experiences, they should uh, reach out to our licensing team at licensing at eighthwall.com. Great, thank you. Um, and are you making eighth wall available for existing AR head-mounted displays, um, you know, such as Project uh, Northstar, Magically, Paul Lens? So Aethwall supports um, for web VR using today's W3C standards. So we have examples on our website uh, and templates you can use directly to build web VR experiences on any of the headsets that support it, which includes a lot of today's kind of most prominent devices. Great. 
Uh, and another question. Um, so the Q a QR code was used in the Adidas example. Uh, do you find that that's still the preferred method uh, for enabling AR content? So QR code has the advantage that it's all you have to do is open up your phone camera on traditional OEM devices on iPhones and Android devices, and then click once to get into these experiences. Um, we find this to be pretty successful for content discovery, uh, but then there's lots of other ways to get in as well. So one thing that's very successful is outbound, um, either outbound texting or emails. You can provide someone with a link to jump immediately into an experience. Um, and another thing we've seen is text a number. You know, text five 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 one two one two, and then you reply back with the direct link to the experience. Great. Uh, is there anything that you would like to uh, highlight right now? Um, no, just to really appreciate the chance to be on stage. So thank you for hosting me and allowing me to kind of talk about what I view as really the next generation of you know reality content. Uh, it's go going to come in a web format. It's going to be deliverable and distributable, open to everyone, and it's an incredibly exciting time to be involved in the space. So I much appreciated. If anyone's interested in air, specifically in eighth wall face effects, um, check out our demos in our virtual expo booth. And thank you again. Excellent. Thank you very much. And please make sure that you do reach out to uh, everyone, everyone that's speaking. Uh, I'm sure they'd be more than happy to answer any further additional questions you may have. Thank you.